Welcome to the Funeral Funds Life Insurance Podcast. I'm your host, Randy Vanderbate from Funeral Funds of America, and you can find us at funeralfunds.com, funeral, F-U-N-D-S.com. Whether you're interested in term life, whole life, mortgage protection, annuities, disability, business continuation, or final expense life insurance, we have you covered. Our team of experienced professionals will guide you through the complexities of insurance products to help you make an informed decision. In this podcast, I'm going to be discussing the difference between group and individual life insurance. And if you happen to work for an employer and they offer you life insurance as a benefit, good for you. Good for you. If you trust your employer to give you the best insurance policy that's going to cover you in the worst case scenario, bad for you. (laughs) Bad for you. Oh boy, there's some big, big differences. And I'm going to go through them separately. Let's talk about group life insurance. Kind of some of this you may know, some of it you may not know. But with group life insurance, coverage is obtained through an employer or an organization. And this policy provides group coverage to multiple people under a single insurance contract. Now, what that means is the premiums are typical lower than for individual policies right off the bat, but um, you have to work there to get access to those. Sometimes they require a minimal under- underwriting. Sometimes they don't require any underwriting. In many cases, when you first come in to the organization, they will accept you no questions asked for the minimum amount of coverage. Now, if you want to purchase additional coverage, there may be some underwriting. That's going to depend totally on the company and totally on the policy and totally on the company that's underwriting the life insurance coverage. This coverage, uh, just understand, you are not permanently, generally, you're not going to permanently work at uh, a company. So just understand that this coverage is going to be temporary and it ends when you leave the company as a rule or when the company terminates your employment. Yikes, right? That does happen. So just understand that this is a life insurance policy that you, you have very little control of. The coverage amount is usually limited. It's usually based on a multiple of your salary. A lot of employers will say, hey, it's one X, one times your salary. So if you make $50,000, you're going to have a $50,000 life insurance policy. If it's 100, you make 100,000, it's going to be 100,000. Think about that. All that does, if you were, let's say you, you've got a spouse and two children that are ages five and seven and you die, how is your spouse and children going to pay for things after 12 months? They're just going to get one year's worth of your income. And then they're going to be left to fend for themselves. So when you when you tell your family, oh, don't worry, I've got life insurance through work. Yeah, yeah, you do. But it's it's kind of like, but it's kind of like saying, hey, I've got a car and I need to drive 100 miles and I've only got enough gas in the tank to get me five miles. Yeah, so. Just, just understand that, you know, that's not enough gas. And in most cases, one extra salary, one times your salary is not enough life insurance. Now, some companies allow you to go by multiples like 2X, 3X, 5X, 7X. So, so sometimes that works out. And I don't have the statistics, but I think it's the average is people are going to work probably seven to 10 different jobs throughout their lifetime. So just imagine all that uncertainty. And then what if you're in between jobs and you pass away? You know, now that 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 married couple, now that spouse and that children age five and seven, they've got no money at all because you're in between jobs and the life insurance isn't going to carry over. Also understand there's limited flexibility in terms of customizations and options. Generally, it's you get what you get. This is typically not whole life insurance that you're getting through your employer. Unless you're really a much more senior member of the team and they have some really customized options for that, but generally rank and file, this is going to be term insurance and it's not portable. 
means if you change jobs or leave the organization or they fire you, it doesn't go with you. And really, you are just at the, the mercy of the group policy, which they can change or terminate without individual control from the employees. They make those, those decisions typically on an annual basis. You know, most people that go to a job and have a job, there's open enrollment period. A lot of times that's in February or some, somewhere around there. And, you know, they change things around to try to find a plan that the, the business can afford that will make the, the employees happy with the benefits package and everything else. Just understand it's a bargaining process every single year with your employer and the insurance company as to what's provided to you as an employee. Now, if you don't like all that uncertainty, the wise thing to do would be to take things into your own hand and actually buy life insurance that you control. Now, I've always viewed employer life insurance as a bonus. You know, it's just a little bit extra money, but it certainly would not provide for my family, at least in the younger days when my family was growing up and I had young kids and stuff. It would be, in my opinion, just flat out irresponsible to only have one year's worth of my income. And, uh, you know, my family's just left to fend for themselves. So I don't recommend that at all. And I can tell you what, if that's, if, if you only have one year's worth of insurance, your family and everybody around you is going to see how much your family's struggling in year two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, all the way up, whatever. Um, your family's going to need more money than that. So individual life insurance is the way to do that. Accept that benefit, be grateful for it, know that it can go away and go get your own individual life insurance. So how that works is coverage can be obtained directly from an insurance company. And when I say directly from an insurance company, very few companies um, actually sell direct. And you, you probably want to be cautious of the ones that do. They tend to be a little bit overpriced or they sell policies that are more overpriced, okay? So just understand in many cases, you're better off going with a broker. That's what we are at Funeral Funds of America. We work with a whole bunch of different insurance companies. We're contracted with them all. We're licensed in all 50 states. And what we do is we go and shop around for you. And you don't pay any more for that. You don't pay any more for our service. It's the same price from the insurance company. It's just, I mean, yeah, we do get a, a commission for helping you out. I mean, we are in business. We, we have to make money as well. But it does not, it's, it's all built into your premium. There's no discount for like if you could possibly go to directly to an insurance company. And in fact, the ones that you go directly to, to the insurance company, they typically have relaxed underwriting, which you might think that's a good thing. It is a good thing if you want to get proved, but relaxed underwriting also means you're going to be paying a higher premium. So it is to your benefit to let us shop around for you and find a company that's going to be most accepting of your age and your health and your gender and the coverage amount and everything, because it varies vastly and wildly with the different insurance companies out there. Premiums are based on individual factors like your age, health, lifestyle, right? Smoker status. Um, you know, are you five foot six and 130 pounds or you're five foot six and 330 pounds? That's going to make a difference. We don't make any judgments. It's just the only thing we can do is help people with where they are right now when they come and ask us for help. So we we just, we shop around for everybody's unique circumstance. So how do you get this individual life insurance? Well, number one, um, again, come to a broker. It, it's going to require uh, more extensive medical underwriting. Now, Sometimes that's going to include a health assessment and a review of your medical history. Sometimes they may want a blood sample and a urine sample and get, getting in touch with your doctor to get your doctor records. That's a fully underwritten. And that's uh, potentially how you get the best rates, but that's potentially how the insurance, co insurance company finds out some things about you to disqualify you. And then there's other companies out there that have simplified underwriting, which means they don't have the, the blood draw or the urine test or stuff like that. They will just go based off your medical records and prescription records. And because they have less 
actual physical information about you, the insurance company is accepting a little bit more risk and they charge a little bit more for that. But the, the, the kind of benefit of that is, is in most cases, you can have an underwriting uh, determination sometimes immediately, but in most cases, less than five to seven days. Whereas if you do the fully underwritten one where they get doctor records and everything, I mean, that can take two, three months. So just keep that in mind. There's always that cost benefit. You know, I'm a member of Amazon and I pay my dues to them every year. So I actually pay more perhaps than I could if I were to buy locally, but I pay for the convenience of getting stuff shipped to my door and everything like that. So uh, in, in so many cases, we are paying an extra fee for the convenience of getting things very quick. And the insurance companies, some of them offer that same convenience. So coverage can be whatever you want it to be. You know, if you want a whole life policy that's going to last your entire life, you can do that. If you want a policy that's only going to last 10 years or 15 years or 20 years or 30 years, you can do that. Some companies actually go up to 40 years. Got to be young for that one, right? So coverage can be chosen based off your individual requirements. So let's say you make $100,000 a year. Well, you may want to get a million dollar policy. What that would do is replace your income for 10 years. So if your kids, if your children are like 12 and 14 or 10 and 12, that's going to get them well over age 20. And hopefully that money would be enough to provide them a college education or whatever needs that you wanted at that point, maybe pay the house off, anything like that. But that's just for income, income replacement. Let's say you had a $500,000 mortgage and you had some other debt. You might need a 1.5 or a $2 million policy. Now, don't let those big numbers spook you out. It can be very affordable depending on the company and your age and your health. But it doesn't really matter because your, your coverage needs are your coverage needs. If, if you were to just hit the ground and go horizontal and your, your heart quit beating, you know, your family's going to need that money. So uh, we can help you out there. We can layer plans. We can get you one plan that's going to go 10 years and another that's going to go 20 years and another that's going to go 30 years. And that way is some of your financial responsibility kind of just peels off over time as you pay off things or take care of bills or, you know, the kids move out. You can actually have your, your life insurance premiums and coverage just decline and kind of just decrease as you want them to de decrease. So you've got an awful lot of flexibility if you work with a knowledgeable, knowledgeable agent that's going to really dig deep, find out what your needs are, and then set up a plan that's going to be just uniquely crafted and just absolutely perfect for you. So you know, maybe, maybe you want a whole life policy that's got a cash value component that you can borrow later in life for needs or retirement or bills or business or anything like that. Um, you know, maybe you just need something temporary, you know, mortgage protection is a great idea. If you got a million dollar mortgage, which is not, not too uncommon these days anymore, you know, a million dollar policy, make sure that that house is paid off so that your, your spouse or partner or family or whatever can afford to stay there after you're gone and not have their whole lives just like tossed and turned and have them try to figure out what's going to go on. Here's the thing. You know, you think if you get a million dollar policy that, um, you know, that person's now a millionaire, but here's the thing, you know, if you're making a hundred thousand dollars and you get a million dollar policy, that's going to replace 10 years worth of income and then it's all gone. So no, you're, 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 you're only a millionaire for like, that that first day because the minute you pull out money out of that you're not a millionaire and if you think about it this way if you think well hey i need enough insurance that that million dollars will always be there and they can just live off the interest rate right so if you have a million dollar policy they put it in investments and they get a four percent in return on investment which is low but can happen and and we've seen that in the last decade you know they would only have forty thousand dollars a year to live on Remember, in, in the example we've been talking about, you're making a hundred grand a year. So you're 60 grand or they're 60 grand in the hole. Say it's a 6% return on the million. Now it's paying out $60,000. It's 
still 40 grand in the hole. So you might actually, if you wanted to replace uh, $100,000, you might need a $2,000 policy or a 2 million, I'm sorry, getting hung up in the math. You might need a $2 million policy, assuming a 5% uh, interest rate. Now, now that's replacing $100,000 a year and you're never going to dip into the initial $2 million. So that's a lifetime income component. And you know what? If interest rates get up to seven, eight, nine, 10%, even better, even better. You know, if, if interest rates go back down to four or 5% or 3%, you know, you've, you've still got more benefit of time uh, just because of the, you, you've got more money in there, 2 million that you do at one. So also, Consider the, the portability that is provided when you get your own insurance policy. So if you own your own insurance policy and you quit that employer or they fire you, you've still got this insurance and, uh, you know, it's there in between jobs until you find a job. And boy, I tell you what, that's, that's when you need this insurance most because, you know, just, um, life, life, uh, Life throws some strange ones at us once in a while. And people do die at the most inconvenient times. So just understand that with an individual policy, you, you have the ability to adjust the coverage over time. You can add coverage, you can decrease coverage. Some of the policies out there, if it's a term life insurance, you've got the ability to convert some of that over to whole life insurance at some point without proof of eligibility which means if you had a 30 year policy, as long as it's the right policy in the right company, uh, say you had a million dollar policy and you had a heart attack and you said, Hey man, I'm never going to be able to get insurance again, you know, term insurance anyway. So what I want to do is uh, convert part of that over to whole life. That's going to last my entire life. So maybe you got a million dollar policy and with that company, you can, you can convert $250,000 over to whole life insurance. And they wouldn't even ask about any recent medical stuff. They wouldn't even care about the heart attack. It would just be based off your, your health at the time that you took that policy out. So a lot of people don't understand the complexities of life insurance. And uh, boy, we've kind of bounced around here a little bit, but there's a lot of things to discuss. And I hope I've been able to illustrate some of the differences between group and life insurance. My name is Randy Vanderbilt. And I hope this podcast has been helpful to you. Funeral Funds of America can help you qualify for first day coverage benefits at funeralfunds.com. That's funeralfunds.com. And our phone number is 888-862-9456. We will be blessed to help you with this in the future. Until that day comes, stay safe, take care, and have a nice day. Bye-bye.